Hey guys, Christy here from De Solo Life and welcome back to our channel. I'm so excited about today's video. I know I say that so many times, but I feel like we're really getting into our groove here with the content that I'm sharing on our channel because it's starting to get more traction, which means people want to see it. And so this video was something that I feel like took me a while to click. And I'm hoping no matter where you're at, if you're in the beginning or you're more medium or advanced, that this is something that if you don't know, it'll be a light bulb moment for you too. So today we are talking about click up statuses. Now, so many times I get the question, where did the check mark go? Why are there these boxes here? How do I make these statuses change direction? So many questions about statuses. Maybe you also want statuses like to do in progress complete, but you want it to group in phases, phase one, two, or three, or groups like Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever it may be, I am going to bring some clarity to your life today. So let's start this tutorial. I'm gonna go through the basics of statuses, going from just a standard check mark to having multiple, and then we will get into grouping and filtering. So this is something that I definitely got stuck on in the beginning of my ClickUp journey because I didn't totally know the difference between task statuses versus a drop down custom field, which I'm gonna pull this up here. So I was thinking, is there ever a time, does that kind of work as statuses? What would I use these for? Sometimes I just didn't totally know also how you could change the direction of the statuses. So either to do is at the top or it's at the bottom. So I want this video to be super helpful for you in just getting a better understanding of what statuses are versus drop down custom fields and teach you a little bit about grouping and filtering. Okay, so here we have our client retainer list, right? So here you might be working with a client and it, there are different tasks that you have to do within their business that hold different statuses to do in progress review, needs edits, complete, etc. And they might have different categories in their business. Maybe you do social media management for them while you also do customer service and admin. And so you want to really organize the way you work with them, but these are two separate ways to group those things. Either knowing what the status of a task is or knowing what category it's falling under. So let's talk about statuses. So here we have statuses, right? You can see this is grouped by status. When you click into a task, you can see the status here in the top right corner. And either you can click on that and advance the status within the task. If you press this little arrow, it's immediately going to go to the next status in the line. And if you mark this complete button, it's going to move it all the way down to that completed status. So let's also talk about real quick the difference between not started, active, done, and closed statuses. So if you don't see this not started status, this is a click app that you have to turn on. So if you go in the bottom left of the settings and you search and you see click apps, search not started and turn that on. So what's the difference? Not started are tasks that are considered not started. So to do, not started, etc. Active means these are actively being worked on, they're active tasks, whatever this is, it's an active piece of data. Done means they are considered done, right? And then complete is the last one, it's completely closed out. So done statuses, if you put something in a done status and it has a due date, it's actually not ever gonna say that it's overdue but it'll still show up on the calendar. So a good representation of this is actually our content calendars. Okay, so I wanted to pull you into our YouTube workflow to show you kind of how this flows, right? So if we go into these statuses, you can get the visual that to do and queue are not started because queue, it's in the queue, it's waiting on, but it is currently not started until it goes into scripting. To do is gonna be a task for any 
subtasks in here, those subtasks go from to do to complete. So you can also have statuses that a parent or a subtask never hits. For example, all of the tasks within our YouTube workflow, all the subtasks, when you click in here, everyone's job is to do this thing and then mark it as complete. They're never gonna hit any of these statuses in between. Where the actual parent task, the YouTube video itself, never hits the to do or complete status. It starts in queue and it goes all the way to published. So I hope that helps just like a little bit of understanding the categories for statuses. So that's why you definitely want to be utilizing the statuses here when it comes to making sure that the task actually has a status that it's living in. There might be tasks that just are to do and then complete. There might be tasks that follow a whole pipeline of to do and progress complete needs edits. You wanna make sure when you click in here, that task always has the right place to be in. Now, another thing that people ask often is, okay, this box right here, well, it used to be a check mark. Where did that check mark go? So what happens with the check mark, and let me show you that. So this is a list with check marks, right? Check marks happen when you only have two statuses. One that's not started, or if you don't have that on, it would be an active, and then one closed status. So that means there's nowhere to move this task in a pipeline of statuses. It's either to do or it's complete. When you check off a task in here, it just goes away. I can always pull it back by clicking show closed and then unchecking it. And then also in here, it doesn't have that status and then the check mark. It just has mark complete. So now you'll see when I go over and hover the statuses and I add another one. So let's add in progress. And then I press save now the check boxes are gonna appear. Because I'm not just checking it off as complete, but I have the option of putting it in in progress or complete. Okay, so that's that portion too. Check boxes versus, boxes versus check marks. Now let's talk about drop down custom fields. So if you're unfamiliar with custom fields, if you click add new column, you can add a drop down. Put in the field name, add the drop downs, right? So category, and then one, two, three, et cetera. Add different colors if you want. And what it ends up looking like is this here. So it looks very similar to statuses, right? And you can even add a column and bring the status on the outside and you actually wouldn't know the difference when you're looking at it in the column view until you click on it. It looks a little bit different inside. So this is because this is the actual status of the living task while this is just an extra field that we added to the task to note something, right? And you can access it on the outside of the task, but you can always access custom fields on the inside here as well. So this is if you wanna categorize information and have a drop down that you select one option. So say I'm working with this client and I do multiple different things for them. Say category one is admin, category two is social media, four is customer service. Well, then what I could do is instead of grouping this by the status, I created another list in here. You could do it in this list too, but I want to show you that in here, I grouped it by the custom field category. So this way I'm seeing everything that I have to do in each category grouped together. And I also added that status field on the outside so I can still move the status, I can still see what the status is, is of that thing, but it's grouped by the category instead of the actual status of the task. Now let's say I add a, another list view and I pin this. It's automatically always going to group by the status. 
But now I can decide, do I wanna group this by the custom fields? Maybe I only wanna filter out category one or statuses in progress, right? So I could do category is category one, or maybe I wanna put it's one or two. This is just the introduction into filtering. So you can filter this information as well to see what you want in these different views. Okay, so that's really it. You can group by the category. You can see if I grouped it by status here. I could group by the status. I could click this to reverse the statuses that way. And I can always choose to see information on the outside that I want. So in the category, do I wanna see status? Maybe not, so I can hide this. Do I want to? Okay, maybe I do, so let's show it again. Show status. Same thing in this status list. Do I wanna see the category? Maybe not, maybe I just wanna see the statuses. But if I do, I could click show slash hide, scroll down to the bottom, and see that category on the right side. So again, just recap, statuses are gonna be for the actual living status of what this task is and what status it can move through along the process, where drop-down custom fields are really to categorize information and add these visual markers, but are not the status of a task. So I hope that video is helpful for you. If it was, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already if you want more ClickUp tips coming your way. If you have a specific question that you would love to know and is not on our channel or anywhere else, make sure to pop it in the comments below and I will either directly reach out to you to answer the question or maybe even create a YouTube video specifically on that topic. So if you are looking for more ClickUp support, we have have a ton of resources, both free and paid, for us to help you. So number one, you can check, check out our free resources on our website at desilvalife.com slash freebies. I will link it in the description below. I'll link all these resources as well. We have a digital product shop where you can try out one or two of our templates to see if you love them. Do they help you with what you are trying to get support on when it comes to ClickUp? All of those templates and more are also in our system school template vault, which also is including our entire ClickUp course in our system school. Make sure to check that out if you are a DIY self-paced type person, but don't worry, you also have me and my team support in our system school community the whole way through. And if you're like, you know what, I need more support, I don't have the time to do all the things myself, and you are interested in a custom ClickUp build project that is also available to you, and I will link our ClickUp consulting page in the description below. If you have any other questions, make sure to drop them in the comments, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.